Case we should have volume out. Michelle, can you let us know if you can hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Hello. All right. Good evening, everyone. Outstanding, outstanding, outstanding. Right, let me just turn on the captions so I can see what people are saying. I did put a bunch of the panelists. Yep. I just clicked on it. So we rejoin it as we speak. I don't know why my computer is so uh, determined to make me watch this is Lord of the Rings keeps popping up for some reason. I don't, I don't know. Um, okay. Well, I, I am definitely not the Lord of the Rings, that's for sure. I'm like Bilbo Baggins in this game, so let me just be clear about that. All right, all right, all right, all right. Let's get ourselves uh, moving here. Uh, if we can call the order 702, a little, little, little early for, for me, unfortunately. unfortunately. Uh, if we can hit a roll call, we can uh, move on to agenda if you will. Matt Castillo. Here. Matt Castillo Klein. Here. Diane Long. Here. And in the room, Mayor Paul Camerat. Here. Online with Brooke Rochette Williams. Here. How are you? I'm informed that she wouldn't be able to be with us tonight. Sure. And we have the vacancy. Oh, sure. Mr. President. I, I am, I am, I am. All right, we'll jump through uh, the agenda starting uh, as always with public comment. Uh, and so workshop or any other, uh, when we have public comment, if you can raise your hand, I see you Ken. give me one second while I go through it, but thank you. You raise your hand, uh, we will call on you, promote you. Uh, you have three minutes, please give your name and address. And if you are in the room, which there, I think other than uh, a text collector today, because I don't think you're speaking on uh, public comment, but you're welcome to as well. Um, uh, other than that, I would say stand if you're able, but you don't have to from home anyway. Uh, and we will go from there. So that being the case, first up, I do see uh, Mr. Ken Belke. Ken, the floor is in fact yours. Okay, thank you, Mr. President. <clears throat> And thank you for council members and borough staff. Um, uh, first of all, my name is Ken Balky, and I reside at 2007 Hampstead Drive. Uh, and I reside with my wife, Ruth Ann, where we've been since we've resided here since 1977. Uh, my comments tonight are a continuing follow up to the Planning Commission meeting last week, uh, dealing with item eight on your agenda on short term rentals. Uh, I made some comments last week. I'd like to amplify um, some additional information this evening. As many of you may know, I chair the trade committee for the borough. And when we developed the ordinance for the uh, Arthur Tree Ordinance back in 2018, 2019, one of the things we did was we reviewed ordinances of about six or eight other municipalities. This is our tree committee itself. It's before we had Gavin and his team get involved with it. We looked at which ordinances seemed, what parts of which ordinances seem to work for what we do. The question I have, and not the answer now, but when you get to the topic on number eight, Ruth Ann, I would really appreciate um, getting a little bit of background. Um, we understand why you're doing it, but a little bit of background, how the ordinance you're drafting has been developed. Um, we were not able to find a draft of it. Uh, maybe we're not skilled enough to do so, but we did look at Fox Chapel, Oakmont and Edgewood, just out of curiosity. And we found out that Fox Chapel doesn't have one. Uh, Edgewood does not have a short-term rental, but they do have a bed and breakfast um, uh, arrangement for their borough. But the one that really was of interest was Oakmont because of uh, people in Oakmont running their homes to professional golf golfers when the tournaments come in. But even then their ordinance was only written in 2019. I'd be interested to know uh, when we looked at the Oakmont, we thought that was the best we've seen of anything of, that we were able to find. And I just was curious uh, as you're drafting, if you have folks done that type of review, um, not trying to encourage the movement of the short-term rental, 
But if you are going to do it, it's just like we did with the trees. You want to make sure it's done right. And um, and even though I'm, we've done this digging, that doesn't mean we big fans of us moving this way. We're concerned that um, it could send a message that Churchill's open for business. So, well, thank you very much. And thank you for everyone working so hard on that topic and many others. Thank you. Appreciate that. We'll make sure that that is covered for you, Ken, uh, without a doubt. Uh, we'll look through and see if there's any other hands in public comments. Uh, as you know, I like to give a couple extra seconds because sometimes it takes people a little bit to kind of to manipulate on the computers to get where they need to be if they're on the phones. Um, so I'm going to give a couple more seconds on this, and then I'm going to ask. I have a call in user one. Um, so I don't see anybody else on the internet side, the, the Zoom side, but I do see there's a call in user one. Um, if you are interested, you can promote and uh, unmute and see if we, if we have any, any comment from calling user one. And if not, we will uh, close public comment. So we'll give a quick second here. Not seeing anything from call in user one. They have been promoted. You have the ability to unmute. All right. All right, then I'm going to close public comment at this time, and we will move forward into a uh, sheet of questions regarding any of the uh, reports so thus far. I know we have more stuff coming down the pipe, so just uh, if anybody's got anything on the early side, any uh, thing for the engineer today? Uh, wait until we get to the items within that. That's good enough on the direct report. Uh, Mr. Manager, just run into the, through the list quickly. Uh, I realize that we have um, the real estate tax refund listed under MG. So I think I'll hold off and when we get to that point, we'll, we'll have that discussion. Uh, I don't know if there's anything else that you hear that you want to discuss. Since we're yeah. this. Not, not a worry. All righty. And we're going to move into not hearing anything else on uh, that end. We'll move into the Management Government Committee. Uh, there's a couple things to discuss, uh, beginning with the real estate tax refund. Um, so I think at this point, I'll kind of leave the floor for you if you'd like um, and to kind of explain, and then we can kind of take it from there. There was a report generated showing the property that was the reassessments that were reduced. And it was a report I'd never generated before. So I gave it to the borough for 21 22. And not knowing that also Act 77, which is the senior citizen discount, was included on that list. So it ended up that the senior citizens have received a rebate twice this year. They had a reduction in their taxes. Plus, they got a refund from the borough. So I'm leaving it in council's hands, how they want to handle it. I would like to generate a letter addressing what happened, why it happened, asking if they would return the checks. Um, one option was if the checks do not come back, that we would not give them the refund next year so it will balance out but this is all how how council wants to so i want to kind of walk through a little bit to make sure there's clarity both for for residents for council mm -hmm. kind of for everyone in in this kind of occurrence because if if i understand it correctly what happened is there is the, as you said the kind of refund that's issued not recognizing something, but that in that process, um, there'd been communication with the borough. Because where, where I'm concerned with a lot of the residents is that residents, you know, to, to a church's credit, mm -hmm. right, um, you know, call up and say, hey, I've got this check, yeah. right? And our borough, you know, the borough manager, the staff are telling them it's okay. Our understanding is that it's fine. 
And so they have given those residents the okay to cash those checks. Exactly. And so, and they did that with the understanding that you thought it was okay for them to do that. Yes. Now they've cashed the checks. And where, where my biggest concern is with some, of, with some of these folks, because we are talking about senior citizens with limited incomes. And so if, if you're me, if I'm thinking myself, when I had a lot less money, not that I have a lot of money, but I had a lot, lot less money. If somebody gave me a check and said, and I called and said, hey, can I, can I cash this check? And they said, yes, I'm gonna cash that check and use it for something, right? I have important things that I need, you know, whether it's taking care of my kids daycare or getting food on the table. And now we're gonna go back to them and say, we need you to pull that money out of your budget. And that, that's where I'm really concerned is how, how, do we, how do we navigate that space not to harm our residents off a mistake that, you know, I understand it happened, uh, but I also understand that they contacted the borough, the borough gave them the information that they were provided so I don't want them to be, you know, to say, hey, Alex, why did you tell me I can pass the check, right? And now we're talking about how we negotiate this with them. And I don't, you know, don't get me wrong. You're sending a letter, absolutely. I think that's, that's a starting point one for sure, kind of explaining in detail mm -hmm. kind of what happened. I do think it's important that it's explained in detail mm -hmm. um, because I think a lot of the residents will initially feel like I called and talked to Alex or Ashley and they told me I could pass that check. Right. And for me, and I'm not going to talk too much more because I don't like when I monopolize the space, so I will be quiet. Um, but for me, one of the things that's really important is that our residents have confidence in our government. And, you know, if a mistake happens, that's fine. Then we need to be transparent to exactly how it happened. So they realize that when Alex says, hey, it's okay to cash it, that he's not giving bad information on his space, that they recognize that we know the impact it may have on them. Right, that we understand it can create a hardship, you know, and then we've got to kind of navigate that space. So that, that's my beginning point. I'm not going to talk anymore and let council ask any questions that they have, and then I'm going to look to the solicitor and, and the borough, borough manager. We can talk about trying to solution. Well, I'd like to say first that in the letter, it will be established that the mistake was on my part, and that the borough, Alex in particular, was working under the assumption that what he had was correct information. So the blame is going to go on me. I generated the report. It was the wrong report. There's no getting past that for me. So this is where it comes back. And that will be expressed in the letter. I said, I'm sorry at the beginning. I'm sorry at the end. And then the center will be how it happened. Questions from, from council members yeah. first, then we'll go to that. Yeah. Um, I, uh, I think, first of all, my recommendation would be that we send the letter and word it in such a way that if you have not yet cashed your check, we'd appreciate it if you'd send it back. If you have cashed your check, Please contact the tax collector and you know we can make some arrangements. I, I think that might take care of, of the problem. Um, but it has to be worded in such a way that a person doesn't panic oh, because yeah. they cash yeah. that check. Yeah. These are options, you know, so, and obviously contact me with any yeah. questions. We may get back or you may get back, um, you know. 60 or 70 percent of those checks that haven't been, been cashed yet, or it might be 100 percent by now. Yeah, we just don't know. When did the checks go out? They um, went out on February 16th, when, and I'm uh, still getting lot. calls. Most from, likely, there are most of them are okay. cashed, yes. and I'm still getting calls from residents because okay. anyone that called me previous, I said, please wait because mm -hmm. something's wrong. We've got, I've got to investigate this. Mm -hmm. And so you should be starting to get checks back already. Yeah, most of them have cleared. I was just getting from Michelle the latest. We were checking okay. the bank last Friday and checking the bank this morning okay. to see what the toes were. And the, the, what percentage has, has gone through, would you say? Yeah. And, what, and what's the total amount of total mm -hmm. dollar amount that we're talking about? You want to give them the totals? Back. It was started at 20000 but 10 of the um, 20 are actual refunds for reassessments that have 
gone down. So right now, the balance is 10,246.64. Over how many properties? Uh, over 100, and I'm not sure. I'd have to count. This is got the idea. This was our, this is our check detail that we have. I kind of highlighted the ones I think, right? Um, and you know, the ones you marked as uh, ones that were in the Act 77. So they had the discount, so they paid a discount, right? And then we actually then gave they, we doubled and shoveled down the discount. So right? twenty three are legitimate right. out of the one hundred. So you still have seventy seven out there. And do, and do we know the number that have, that have cleared? Yes. So um, I haven't sorted them all, but it looks like eighty eight hundred cleared on Friday. That's a Friday. So most of them have gone. Through. And I've experienced over the last, last year and a half, I've only had one resident that I haven't been able to resolve right away an issue. And I plan on, like you said, having the letter, there's different options, but this is all stuff that I think that Alex and I, if we sit, I'll draft the letter and then Alex and I can go over the garbage and make the changes that are needed, that I don't want anyone to feel pressure because of a report that I printed on. I, I wanted, you know, these, this is what happened. These are your options. Please call me if you're not able to make the payment and, or, you know, refund or give the refund back. Just very low key. I don't want it to be you know, we need this money back because I made a mistake and I want this. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's going to be real, and hopefully, they'll, they'll people will understand. Now, a second option, and I discussed this with Alex if they don't refund the check, we could not give them their discount next year. So, that I know, but I'm just saying, I'm, that not, sure. Would, yeah, I'm, not, sure. I'm not sure that's even that would be yeah. legally permissible. Yeah. I'd have to look okay. into it, but I, I don't think we can. I don't think that's enough. All right, then we'll just take that one off. So, just for a little more background, um, what communication went out with these checks? And I guess, why, why were people calling in the first place that they were confused? It was just they got a check. So, when we okay. It's a bit frustrating when we had all these checks. We had a conversation with Danielle about well, how do we communicate? Because if I got a check on an envelope, I would wonder what it's for. So we had a little discussion. Yeah. Um, and I. So there was no information with well, the check was, saying I, why it was a miscommunication. I okay. thought that they, we would include a letter saying this is a rebate for your property assessment, but it was miscommunication again between. The office in May. It just so it was a big mistake. From I was under the impression that since it was a refund dealing with their assessed value, so they, like then, for example, like the Roland property or the Allegheny Land Trust, that this was something they would have been aware of and been communicated they were getting this check. Okay. So when they communicated to us that they had no recollection of that or that that was something they would be familiar with, we began to be like. Okay, that's interesting. And, and yeah, our understanding was that the tax collector had sent a letter and or the county verifying the new assessed value and the refund due, like again with that rolling, which will be on the list of bills we pay that to the Westinghouse um, hot sale facility. They won a tax appeal and we're owing money, or the Allegheny Land Trust, who went from a for profit you know, owner to a non profit owner, and the county awarded them. Rebate and, and I think what was a rebate is like four thousand or five thousand well, dollars. Now tax exempt. Yeah. So they yeah. Tax. And I just want to pause for a second. Brooke, did you have any any questions? I I don't yeah. want to not have this conversation. Absolutely. Would like to see if we could check into the legality of um, potentially not applying the tax credit for the upcoming tax season to see whether or not that is something that we could do. I'm pretty sure other municipalities have may have experienced this issue before, so we can do some research to kind of find out what are some other solutions that other municipalities have adopted. And then my next question for um, Danielle is what are the procedures that are in place to prevent this issue from happening again? Um, it's just generating the correct report. 
It was the first time I had printed this type of report. I now know what I did wrong and it won't happen again. Okay, so in the letter that's being sent to homeowners to notify them that they receive a refund they were not supposed to receive, will you include the amount um, that they were supposed to pay, the amount of the refund that they received, and the difference that is now owed back to the borough? Will all that information be explained in the letter? Yes, it will. Each individual, each individual letter will be geared to that resident explaining that this was your tax, $400, you received a $100 rebate, so your tax is only $300, plus you got a check for $100. So in essence, you got the rebate twice. So that will be explained and it'll be detailed to each individual resident. Okay, all right. So one of the scenarios that I, that I do want to be clear about and, and understand, and this is really about being just good stewards of um, our residents' taxpayer dollars. So if we have an, and I, and I know you're, you're just trying to work it out, I think I need more than try to work it out. I need to understand that, not right this minute necessarily, mm -hmm. but to understand specifically what the plan is and how it would apply. For instance, if an individual says, I don't have it, oh. right? Like, not happen? that I don't want to pay it, I'm, mm -hmm. you know? I, I called my daughter's tuition. I, I asked Alex, he said it's fine. <laughs> I double checked, I made sure. Mm -hmm. And now you're telling me I gotta pay it back. And to pay it back, I gotta take food off the table or not make the mortgage or not make my car payment now. So I need to understand what those plans will be more specifically. You know, I I lean heavily on on the wisdom of our solicitor. Uh, some things I think when he jumps quickly to, I generally go like, okay, so that's 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 the obvious no space for us, right? There might be nuanced spaces that we can find. Um, where I have concern even in that though, to, to be quite frank, is when we have him do those things, that costs the taxpayer money too, right? right? So now we have the solicitor doing things that cost us money. If Alex is generating things and not doing the other things he should be doing, that costs the taxpayer money. So I really need to hear in the next few days, kind of what that plan will look like. And then we can run it. Certainly, I mean, we've got to run it by the solicitor anyway. It's unavoidable, right? Like we, we're not, we're not going to do something that, that is not legally sound. Um, but th that part has to be specific. I don't, I think we could run into, and, and you know, I could be wrong. And, and I say this for your own protection as well, um, that we could run into some very dangerous territory if we start going case by case, individual person by individual person, this person can pay it back this this month. This person we're going to give more time to because they don't have money. This person needs to return the check. I, I think that puts us in a in a in a awkward. difficult position. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not so much even worried about awkward. I'm worried about somebody saying, "Hey, Danielle didn't treat me fairly, right? right? She made this mistake, and then she let Bob over here pay it back in three months, and I got to pay it back in a month, mm -hmm. and then he comes at you and they you award know, me, and we we don't want that for any of us." Mm -hmm. So a consistent plan, I think, is really important um, that outlines and details from the letter and information provided to the residents to what we do for people who, you know, you return your check, you, do they get confirmation that it's come back, do they get, because I also think that there's a space we're in about trust and competency that when somebody's come and said, hey, does this work, and they've called Alex, and Alex says, trust me, Right, like it's good, you can cash it, that we've lost some trust and we need to build that trust back. And so that requires more than just you sent the check back in. So even people, if I had my check and I mailed it back in, is there gonna be a confirmation for them that says that they now have a zero balance, that everything's gonna pay? So that's all part of what I think we need to have in order to kind of right the ship here. Um, so that, that's that's my thought and I will turn to, to other folks and then to the solicitor again. I'd like to add, you know, what kind of support, uh, Ms. Weaver, can you utilize from council to help ensure that there's checks and balance in place? So the next time a report is generated, maybe the finance committee could review it, look it over, you know, go through the process to make sure that there are multiple steps in place to verify that this is the appropriate refund that needs to be issued to the 
individual on um, the list. So, you know, providing some su support to Ms. Weaver as well to ensure that we are all being good stewards of the money um, and dollars that are generated from property taxes. And I appreciate that point. The, the only thing that I would say about that, there is a little complexity, the idea of an independent elected office and whether or not council has that kind of oversight over the taxpayer or the tax collector. So, you know, it's something that I'm not saying I, you know, I object to, but I think that there is a, there is some implications to saying that council will now have some sense of oversight or authority over another independently elected body and whether or not that's appropriate. I don't think that's what Brooke is saying. And please correct me if I'm wrong. I think what she's saying is that I have to make sure when I'm giving the borough and being able to verify, here's the thing from now, here's the letter from Allegheny County, and here's the paperwork showing not just one report, verifying that what I received from Allegheny County is what the borough is receiving and that the reports are accurate. I, is that what you're saying rather than council overseeing me? Right, no, council cannot oversee. What I'm saying is to ensure that the reports that you are generated are correct, right? To make sure that there is another step of verification just to check in to make sure that this is the accurate report and that all dollars that are supposed to be issued in a refund are valid. So we don't have this issue again because we are where we are at this point. And so we want to ensure that, you know, moving forward, we don't have this issue. So we need to somehow together work together in order to ensure that this does not happen again. So, yeah, I, so for, for a point of clarification for me, um, Danielle produ produces a report, right? She verifies the report. If she has somebody kind of look it over, that then goes to the borough manager right? He then exercises the outcome of that report. At what point do you see a role of counsel that doesn't tread into oversight of saying, I reviewed your report, I think something's wrong, something needs to be corrected, because that's counsel then stepping into the space of another duly elected official. So I just, and, and I'm not trying to be, I just want to make sure I understand because what, I understand what you said, which, which made sense to me in terms of you want to make sure that the information is accurate as you send it into to Alex and, and that's something that you're going to do to kind of fix that that space right. Um, it's different than it comes to like the Finance Committee and the Finance Committee reviews and then gives a, approval. Um, I don't think that yeah. here's the re this is what the report looks like that I get from Allegheny County. This is the report that should be <laughs> right. to Alex. And this, I have what I'm going to be, what I'll do is the documentation from Allegheny County, along with the report, will be turned in to both Alex and I think I'm sending it to Ashley, Ashley and yourself. Yeah, when it comes to me, then we start then to include it. If it is right. a reason, you have the, list of the both verification yeah. from Allegheny County. This won't happen again. Yeah, this no, I, I got like that. I, one time. I, I, to I totally get that point. And I think. For, for, for clarification to Brooke too, that, that ends up to, is out is out saying in order to be paid, but we're not in a position to validate the accuracy of the report itself in terms of the finance committee. I don't think that's a, an appropriate space. Correct, correct me if I don't look from anyone at the table right now. Well, I just had one question, which is, was there any involvement here with the school district? Did you have a I problem with no, school because the school doesn't do senior citizen discounts. Okay. And I spoke with um, Susan, who's now my contact person, right? And I told her, don't issue any refund checks. They haven't yet. I said, please okay. don't. I'm having the other the tax collector that trained me is coming Monday. And we're going over everything to make sure that yeah. I understand that what I'm doing is correct. Right. So that's okay. okay. And then I have another suggestion for the letters. Um, I don't know how the checks come to me. And that way, people can make a $10 a month payment if they want. They can stretch that over a whole year. It's not that they have to pay it all back at one time. 
and it'll be deposited, it'll be put under a separate account. And that way I can keep track of my burdening the count the bur uh, the borough again to rectify my mistake, my my bad report that I sent. Yeah. So I'd like to take on all of the responsibility associated with it. And as far as Mr. Solicitor, I'm not sure how you handle it. One person pays and one doesn't. I don't thought, I don't know how you can do that. I, I have some thoughts on that, uh, some of which, the majority of which are probably appropriate for an executive session with council mm -hmm. um, as the legal and potential litigation matter that it is. So, um, it, but it also, in fairness, I, it's it, this is a unique situation factual circumstance. So um, I am going to be looking into doing a little bit of research just to see really what our what our options are. I think in all these instances, you have your person who just returns the check, great. We don't have a problem. You have someone who wants a payment plan. Um, as you said, you're starting to treat different people differently. And then you have someone else who says, well, I can't or won't pay it back. And then that's you know a loss to the borough. And how is that how is that happening? So yeah. there there are some I, like I said, I have some ideas about that. So why don't we kind of circle back? I appreciate all the information that, that you provided. Um, I think it's going to take. So obviously, it's going to take a little bit of work to, to sort our way through this, right? Okay. Um, well, you know, if you can think about kind of what the you know what the plan you would have for the kind of there's really four there's really four scenarios, right? I still have my check. I haven't cashed it. I've cashed my check, but I can give you the money back. I've cashed my check, but I need some kind of payment plan because I can't get back. And I've cashed my check and you ain't seen any of my right? So, you know, um, and so working through those four scenarios and then we can work with the solicitor to come up with a solution that kind of rectifies it. I definitely understand and I'm certain that it's a mistake that you learned in terms of that end. Um, so, you know, I know- I haven't slept for like four days. I, so. I, I am confident that it's, you know, it's not something that we will, we will see again in, in that sense. Um, but it is something that- Notify that, me of what your decision is. Or to say no point clarification. Yeah. The letter doesn't go out until we oh, yeah. get this right. done. Yeah. So, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna have you kind of we'll the, we're all gonna touch base kind of this line right here, um, mm -hmm. and then we will we'll kind of move it forward from there. I think will okay. be the best way. Then I'll notify you know council after Alex and the solicitor kind of work their way through it. Okay. Um, then we'll see. We'll see what the what the world brings. Other questions, yeah, points, concerns. Yeah, yeah, we're doing this. Yes. If I could. Um, Thank you. I'm moving. Thanks to, I gotta go. Thanks I, I for participating. I, I, I appreciate you coming out and, and um, kind of sort of. If you need me next Monday, I'll be here. Okay. Thank you, then. Since since people can do Q and A and they've asked some questions um, at the Allegheny County website, people wonder, well, how can I get my Act 77 and who's eligible? Just quick point. It's a uh, Act uh, 2023 Act 77 Senior Citizen Tax Relief. They have the qualifications, including how long you have had to own the property what your age is and income greater than less than. And there's more information and we don't have time to go through it this evening, but if you're already online, you might want to just Google Pennsylvania Act 17, you know, Act 77, sorry, Act 77 Pennsylvania and Allegheny County, hopefully it'll come up quick or you might need to add that to the search and you'll come to the website I'm showing you now, which again, allows for senior citizens to get tax relief. And if you look on the side, of the website of the county, they have all of the acts, Act 50, Act 132, Act 156, related to various things that property owners all have a right to see if they're eligible for. So for that, maybe we had a lesson learned for some people to learn that they may have been eligible for something they didn't know they were eligible for. True that. I just had a quick comment sure. just to say, thank you, Danielle. And, and I think for all of us as elected officials, you know, when, when we make a mistake, the, the first thing is to admit to it and say sorry, and which is, which is fantastic. Understood. So, so we appreciate it. I think that's, you know, that's what we all would expect and, and how we all want to serve Churchill. So just don't fire me. That's no, you know, we, 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 we figure out a plan, we move forward and we say, we're sorry and, and learn it. So thank, thank, thank you. You too. Okay, uh, staying in that was bullet one. So <laughs> get, get a We're on number five. Let's let's start with that. Well, Pause let's get number five. Um, so let, let me kind of punch through a couple of these just so, so we know where we are. Um, in terms of discuss to fill the vacancy, a uh, couple of things I want to point out. Uh, one, there were a couple of emails that came through on semantics of May. And so I want to clarify a couple of things and let everyone know again, as you may recall in the prior meetings. I said that we would interview uh, potential candidates. 
Um, that has not changed. You know, the, the term may, if somebody happened to show up who was, a, you know, quite frankly, you know, a uh, violent offender, uh, I, I may not uh, you recommend that, that we interview that person. Um, and so some flexibility in that space is normally used. Uh, but no, it, it, as it was stated before we posted it on, on the website, as we stated it in our meetings, and it has been the, the policy for most of us, I think I think almost everyone at one point came in through an appointment, uh, just because the way that things work here. Um, we've always had that interview process, and it's no different. Now, I will say that there was a moment that we may not have had kind of the more formal interview, and the reason for that was that up until the last day, we only had one candidate. And that would, of course, change how we did an interview if you only have a single candidate. But we do have two candidates at, at this time. Uh, both candidates have been contacted. Uh, we will, the management and government's gonna speak with them and then we'll have the, the full council interview as always. Um, that will happen on Monday's meeting. Um, and then following kind of council's interview, whatever questions you have, you all have the resume that you've had the opportunity and you have the opportunity to look through. Um, once you've asked your questions, and I hope you've thought about it, you know, prior, uh, then we will vote, uh, at which time, and the vote will be public, just like everything else in it, at that time, then we will have a new member of council. Um, that has been the modus operandi here, and I, I can tell you from the time that I got here, uh, you know, in 13 years ago, going on 14 years, um, and I know, and it has, it has stayed that way you know, um, and I would expect that there would be no change. Mm -hmm. uh, so that that is kind of where we are. Um, again, we have two candidates, um, which is better than one. Let me say that now. So, um, so that is the, the line up there. As you can see, the candidates names are already down in, in, in the agenda. So I don't need to be kind of coy in that sense. Um, but I, I look forward to, to speaking with them. And uh, I hope everybody has, has thought about what they would like to ask our yeah, potential new new members. Uh, any questions on that? All right, not seeing any questions. We're gonna move down to uh, the resolution. Oh, one last thing I will say is that the reason that is set for, of course, next Monday's meeting, um, you know, in terms of timing for, for our obligation, you know, that is the end of the timing in which we are able to, to fulfill our obligation. After that, we would have failed to fulfill our obligation and it would have to be moved to the vacancy committee stating that, you know, council was unable to do their job. And I, I believe we have two, two qualified candidates who would be able to do our job. All right, um, moving on to a record retention policy, questions, concerns, thoughts, pretty basic, anything. Just working with Gavin, this is a good housekeeping kind of thing for local governments to do. It enables us to have a process to follow the state guidelines for keeping and uh, disposing of records, destroying records uh, after the appropriate legal limits. So pretty standard, um, it's something we wanna do along, you can think of some of the things we've done over the years, whether it's communications policy or some of the policies we've done related to finance, we're just the you know, housekeeping kind of things. I, I appreciate when we put ourselves in line with the, the with proper procedures mm -hmm. in code of bond. So uh, thank you for that. Um, moving past that, let's see we've got uh, appointments. Well, while I'm looking at it, that we got to make sure this gets into the newsletter because we haven't had a lot of people banging on the door oh. to be on the zoning hearing board. Yes. We're on the treat committee. So there are two positions on the treat committee that would go through, I think, the council's climate action correct and then the zoning hearing board it might first hit government management if someone's interested but i haven't had people when i get them i'll share them with you okay um, as it could but maybe we hit the newsletter while we can huh? okay <laughs> tomorrow first thing tomorrow yeah, don't okay. yeah. Well, yeah. i will take, take what, what, right. what we can get it's, it's always you know wonderful to have people who will volunteer you know uh, i will say that you know having at least two people for council, whoever doesn't um, get selected, I would hope they would consider some of these other available yeah. positions mm -hmm. uh, because anyone that, that's willing to help Churchill, I think, uh, you know, qualified folks, are, there's other opportunities to do so beyond simply being on, on council. Um, all right, any other questions on that? All right, moving us into finance committee. Strategic management planning program. Yeah, so Valerie, of course, is in here right. this evening and she's the chair. But um, we did discuss with her um, 
Michelle and I had a meeting with the state to review the Pennsylvania Department of Community and Economic Development Strategic Management Planning Program. And it is a basically a short and long-term financial health assessment. The state um, really wants to help communities stay out of financial distress. And it's a lot simpler for them to invest in healthy communities than sick or terminally ill communities. You can think of the Act 47, some of those communities have been for decades uh, in the state's municipal bankruptcy program. So uh, in order to prevent that, they're offering and they're trying to encourage communities who are well, maybe just need a little help, a little bit of thought about their budget, uh, some financial assistance to do that. And it's through the local government academy as well. There's a, a certain way if we go through the local government academy and then through the state, um, there'll be more programs that will be available. So we haven't applied for anything yet. We just want to get this out in front of you. We anticipate the committee will make a recommendation maybe as early as April, but probably not till May about what they want the council to consider with this program. But I would encourage all of you to look into the program and uh, there was a lot of information in your binder related mm -hmm. to the program and the guidelines. Thank you. And anything else? Any else you'd like to hear something uh, and move ourselves forward? Right. Uh, anything on public safety? Yeah. Um, first of all, we uh, uh, submitted an article for the newsletter having to do with the emergency management. Uh, and I think we provided in that article the basics that people in the community need to understand how we're set up and if there is a system here that they can rely on. Um, Another is that we um, are going to have a retired chief, Gerald Simpson, coming back to talk with us about the possibility of uh, police leadership training. Uh, and we've invited Wilkins and Forest Hills to sit in uh, because if there are enough people, we could possibly do that through the cog. So that conversation is going to occur and he's very kindly stopping again um, in conjunction with uh, other work that he has here in, in other than Canon. And we're still focused on getting those manuals done for both police and fire. Perfect. Uh, questions, thoughts, moving forward? To that very short bulleted report uh, from infrastructure, very, very quick. <laughs> Uh, moving on to uh... infrastructure is never very quick. <laughs> um, you, know so what I, the, you know what I say. What the, I do. the infrastructure committee uh, did have a meeting. Uh, that report I just sent that to Alex this morning, so I apologize I missed the binder, but you'll see it for next week. Um, you know, a couple of things are, are in in here. The planning commission uh, did review and discuss the um, 5G ordinance and short term rental rental ordinance. So. Um, you know, they had some additional comments to work through with Alex. I don't know if we'll have forthcoming changes on either of those that we'd have to go back under consideration, but um, we're working through those um, based on that, you know, and then once once that's all fine-tuned, that uh, it's moved forward from there, you know, then it, it would go through a, a public hearing for that. Yeah, last week, um, Joel from the Cohen Law Group was not able to be with us, the planning commission meeting, but he is watching the Zoom link, and then tomorrow he's meeting with a few of us to, to, to discuss some ideas and then I'll come back to Gavin and kind of discuss whether we need to go back to county planning and you know, wait some time before we schedule a hearing or whether the changes we might have to make or could make are minimus. And next Monday, we would get approval from council to advertise a hearing at a future date to consider this and as well as the other draft. So do you mind giving a, a quick Kind of synopsis with the genesis, particularly of the short-term rental, being that I think Ken sounded a little confused on kind of what our what yeah. our kind of uh, spaces so, with that. Uh, yeah, I, I felt frustrated. I think because we could have done a little better. We, as a council, shared a lot of things in older binders. Binders can be like your library shelf. Mm -hmm. And if you remember, the Pennsylvania Municipal League was very active in trying to get the state legislature to have a carve out that the would be acceptable to Federal Communications Commission. The FCC regulates the world of federal interstate communications. And what we were fighting for, that is the local government associations, were a small area to be able to think about some things related to this small 
uh, wireless communications facilities. These are not independent um, tower, giant towers that we've been familiar with over the last few decades as cell communications have, have developed. These are uh, small units, uh, not much um, smaller than a refrigerator, but bigger than like an air conditioning unit that you might see on a utility pole uh, throughout a community, whether that's a telephone pole or an electric pole or even a, a traffic light or a, a street light. And I will share more of that information with you all. But basically, it was a 2021, I think the state said, okay, local governments, you can kind of look at it. And then 2022, Kellen had what, 2,000 clients? Yeah because all of us were trying at the same time to modify our ordinances. And we last March, I think, authorized the Common Law Group to help us with this, but it took us a while to get to now March of 2023. Mm -hmm. We're actually looking at that small area of car We can't ban them, we can't forbid them, but what we can do is do with some of the things related and, to our concerns. And I appreciate that, especially the explanation for the public on that one. I'm also interested, Ken had a question really that was about the short-term rental space. Yeah, so, so on the, on the short-term rental ordinance, um, you know, that's something that was brought to council's attention based on, you know, some previous events that have made the news of, of issues with short-term rental. Uh, the reason that we took the approach we did in writing the ordinance is based on some, you know, advice of our solicitor and ongoing lawsuits. Um, you know, the option to ban them completely, um, you know, is, is probably not allowed. Uh, there's some cases that have gone through and, and are currently being appealed, I think, to the Supreme Court. But it's I don't think not ongoing lawsuits against Churchill. Against God. Churchill, right. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah national, national yeah, uh, yeah, in cities where they've tried to right. ban them. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, you know, based on that, the best practice is to um, set, set up an ordinance that then controls it. You know, how do we, so, so we know that it's happening right now without an ordinance saying anything, um, we really don't have any power to say, you know, if somebody wants to put their house on Airbnb <laughs> or something else, there's really not any way in our, our current code to enforce anything against that. Let alone just even know. Right, or even know, right. So the short-term rental ordinance that was presented, uh, you know, requires um, registration. And then I believe it's conditional use that, you know, you have, you have to be approved for it. Um, based on your application, um, you know, requires an inspection, and then, you know, does address a, a number of issues that, you know, if it becomes a nuisance property with noise and, and all types of other stuff, uh, limits number of people based on bedroom size, uh, you know, number of beds. So, again, this is an area where it's, it's kind of gray. Um, council became aware of it based on some of the, the national things going on and some of the best practices put out by the Boroughs Association, the other stuff. You know, and the recommendation was if you don't have something for this, you need to get on top of it. And I think our residents should know it's already happening. There are houses in Churchill, people who are already renting out their houses, and there are no rules right now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we need to establish something. I would just like to report that from the Planning Commission, uh, as usual, we got, you know, really intelligent, thoughtful questions, yeah. discussion, mm -hmm. answers. Uh, and one of the questions, Alex, if you, you know, want to correct me or not, but one of the questions was, what has happened in other places where they've tried to ban short-term rentals? And there are serious questions about whether or not that'll hold up in court. <laughs> um, the other thing about it is I want to be clear. This is a this is a you know an either or. You may take the position as Ken was suggesting that having an ordinance invites this activity. On the other hand, you can take the position that requiring someone to come to the borough and be registered and meet those criteria will keep people from doing that, you keep people from renting out the property. And uh, so I understand the concern, but there are two sides to the discussion. And the question is whether or not we think we're representing the interests of our residents by doing one over the other. And I, I would offer a third kind of position yeah. to this in, in that kind of binary choice of it either invites everyone yeah. or, or, it does, or it tries to block everyone. You know, the reality of, of, I think, our role in government is to ensure that we are regulating things in a way that is safe and that is best <coughs> for our residents. And so the idea of, of whether or not it even has a perception of inviting folks 
right? If we do not have some sense of regulation, we will become reactive. And the worst reactive cases, right, are those cases where there's no rules at all, somebody has some kind of reckless event, somebody gets hurt, right, and then somebody says, right, why didn't you have something in place, right? Were you, were you negligent in, in your role? Now, I don't think that we are trying to say, you know, we want to make Churchill into, in, nor by the way, do I think Churchill becomes the, yeah. the landing site of everyone like, you know, I really want to go and spend the year. Um, it's great to live, but I, I don't know if that were the, the number one vacation spot. Um, but that being the case, I think there's a reality to ensuring for the safety of our residents that we have proper regulation in place. So that even those who want to have and participate and rent their homes out can do so in a way that's safe for them. Um, so I appreciate the work. I think I just want to bring up that kind of third yeah. space. Yeah. Um, and I hope that that was helpful for Ken and for others uh, in terms of explaining kind of where we were uh, on yeah. that. Kevin, I mean, your firm has written a little bit about this related to advising statewide. Yeah, I, mean, I, I was going to mention that we, we have been what I feel is, is on the forefront of this particular issue. We, my firm was presented across the Commonwealth on short term rental zoning issues. Not me personally, but uh, luckily there's way smarter people in my office. Oh, you're a pretty smart guy. Figure this there, stuff man. out for me. So, so, I mean, while there's always room for, for tweaks or, you know, improvements, um, you know, keep in mind, it, I think it's ideally you want to have something on the books sooner rather than later because you can always go back and say you know what this isn't working in maybe this zoning district so let's pull it out of the r1 and leave it in r2 through r5 so you know i think the bigger danger as you said is, is not having any regulations right now rather than you know having some that maybe aren't perfect but it's a, it's a very good starting point this is very consistent with what some of our other municipal clients have been uh have been adopting these regulations you know, there was with input from the infrastructure committee um, that these sort of zoning districts were chosen. Some of these other items were were discussed. So, um, you know, there's been there's been that level of input. And when we say conditional use, you know, I think people need to understand that that literally means filing be a public hearing before council, where any members of the public, any neighbors, could come express any particular concerns about that property being used as a short term rental. Mm -hmm. A very public, transparent process. And then that's something that uh, needs to the way this is set up, as I, as I recall correctly, Matt can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think every year it's got to be renewed. Uh, the permit, not the conditional use correct. itself, but the permit's got to be renewed. So if you have someone who's behaving badly, you know, you could address that on an annual basis. And there are a lot of uh, you know regulations that really are attempting to mitigate the impact on, uh, on the surrounding neighborhood. So that's that's the goal of the ordinance is to have you know, have some regulations, have some council control up front. And then have some ongoing control as to what's actually occurring in the property. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, just want to make sure, Brooke, if you had any questions regarding this as well. I think I just want to follow up with some of the questions that were asked um, regarding how many homes are currently rentals. Do we have any, you know, idea of how many homes this will impact, whether or not this is really an issue for Churchill, or are we being presumptuous with passing um, an ordinance regarding short-term rentals that's not really applicable to our community. I think proactive rather than presumptuous is probably the word that I would choose. I, I, there's no official registry. Um, I know you can sort of hunt around without getting exact addresses on Airbnb and I saw a BR, couple on Airbnb when I was... They call themselves Verbo now, but yeah, I refuse right. to do it. I know. <laughs> uh, uh, so, you know, I think the answer is we're not sure, uh, but, you know, yeah, so. I was just, just going to say, I think that, that your question is part of the reason why we need the ordinance, right? Your question is how many do we have, for instance, you know, there's no way of knowing, right? We don't have any process by which someone who is interested or who wants to rent out their home notifies the borough, right? Or for that matter, impacting their surrounding neighbors. So. The answer is we have no idea, um, nor do we know, you know, what the conditions that they set forth on those rentals are. So some places, you know, somebody may rent and say, whatever happens, you can rent my house, but you can't have a party in my house, right? Yeah. Somebody may say, I don't really care because you know what, you know, this house isn't my, my primary residence anymore. You can do what you want in the house. We have no way of understanding it. 
Um, the purpose of this, I think, is to be proactive in a space, as I say, that gives us that information, protects our community, protects the neighbors, right? So that we can start to set in some, some guide rail or some, some rails in this, um, you know, and that as Gavin said, should there be a problem, right? That we have tools in place to address the problem. You know, the, I think one of the things of good governance is, is trying to think ahead, not to think, you know, in a reactionary space. And I really, we know that this is a potential problem. We've seen it in other places. And so we're not trying to say it's absolutely not allowed, right? But we are trying to say that we are going to put conditions in this space to ensure that our residents are protected, both the people who are renting, okay, and the surrounding community. Yeah, I make an observation. Sure. So uh, what, what, what makes the world Sorry. Good. Go ahead, so I, I think a part of also good governance is not encroaching on people's autonomy and their ability to operate within their home the way that they choose to. Um, with the short term rental third parties, they do have parameters and procedures and requirements in place to prevent, um, especially following what we witnessed in Pittsburgh, to prevent um, individuals from renting properties and having large gatherings or having individuals there that are not supposed to be there based on the reservation. So I just want to be, you know, clear that, um, you know, I understand the importance of protecting our community, ensuring that we create and maintain the fabric of this community. I just don't understand or I don't believe that this is a priority right now, especially when there have been concerns about other zoning issues that we've received a number of emails about um, how does the short-term rentals take precedent over those issues. I would, I would point out that one of the impressive things uh, of, our, of our infrastructure committee uh, is their capacity to do more than one thing at one time. I don't think that we find ourselves when we either do, as I think, as you can see, even on the existing list, you know, it's not a either we do the short-term rental or we do the 5G or we do the, there's a reason why the infrastructure, poor infrastructure has, has such the long, the long list that they provide. Um, I would say in response to uh, the, the idea of autonomy with regard to their property, again, I don't think that the, the, the statement here is that there is a ban on uh, Verbo, VRB, uh, or Airbnb or any other. I think you know the, the, the question is, do we have some guidelines as it relates to that? And you know, I look at this from the public, and this is just my personal, I haven't discussed with the other members of, of council, just to be clear, um, but I look at this and say, if we don't have some idea of where these locations are, right, in terms of autonomy and what's happening, and there's an incident that takes place and our police have to go there and they don't know what's happening, or our fire has to go there and they don't know what's happening, you know, there are real implications that would lead me to say there are safety measures for the, the renters, for the people who own the homes, for the surrounding community. Um, and so I just, I don't want this to be perceived or misperceived as a statement of, you know, we are infringing upon the autonomy of people to rent their homes out. We are providing guidance and guidelines to ensure that it's done in a safe right, and community friendly fashion. Uh, and I, I would leave it there. I so how, just how is this going to be monitored? Um, are we asking for individuals to willingly share this information? And if they do not, how will we ensure that we know, you know, what property is supposed to be registered versus which property is not, if they don't come forward on their own? So, I mean, ideally, right, of course, we want people to voluntarily do the right thing. But if the borough becomes aware that someone is using a home for a short-term rental, then the borough would have enforcement uh, authority to prevent that use from occurring until such time as the proper uh, channels are, are navigated, including obtaining the necessary condition of use approval. So again, I, 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 we should note too, that these are only for short-term rentals. In other words, this, this has no impact on your sort of 
year to year lease or six month lease or, or whatever. These are for you know 30 days or less at a time. And, and you're right, there's no guarantee we're going to catch them all. But in, in honestly, that for as a practical matter, if someone is renting their property and there's not any issues, the borough is probably not all that concerned about it anyway. Ideally, everyone's compliant, but it's going to be that problem property where we become aware and say, hey, we found your listing. You need to comply or else, you know, we're going to go ahead and initiate enforcement proceedings. So you hope that we won't have to do that a whole lot. Um, and to your initial point of, and, and I think everyone agrees, I don't think that this is, no offense, the vacation hotspot uh, of, of uh, you know, even the, east, even the eastern suburbs, perhaps. <laughs> but, um, you know, so I don't think it's a huge, huge issue yet, but certainly having, you know, th this is a best practice. Um, I can tell you that almost our, all of our municipal clients either have already adopted similar ordinances or, or are in the process of, of kind of where you folks are. So, um, you know, I, th I think it's, you know, it's, it's our recommendation. We think it's a good idea to get it done. Two, two other comments I would bring up is, um, you know, just to follow on with Gavin, um, you know, if you're running a, a regular rental, we recently passed, you know, an occupancy inspection as well. And that requires, you know, part of that was making sure that if you're renting your property year over year, you have an annual occupancy, occupancy inspection, again, to protect the health, safety and welfare of residents of the borough and people who are staying here. So, you know, this, this is adding on to that. This is an extension that if we're having rentals, whether long term or short term, we're controlling those, like we said. Uh, the other thing, too, is that we didn't mention is, um, you know, at some point, th there are folks that, that run these as a business. This isn't necessarily just the neighbor that takes a, two weeks off or goes away for the winter for a month and says, hey, somebody's going to, you know, rent my house for a week or two. Uh, there are a lot of folks that run this as a business. So that can create problems of its own, just like landlords, you know, they're absentee, uh, which is part of why we had the occupancy, you know, ordinance that we passed a couple months ago as well. Um, you know, and also tax implications. I mean, if you're running a business, you know, there, there may be certain hotel taxes and other things that we need to make sure the county's aware of and other stuff. So I, th I think there's a lot of, um, a lot of pros and, and reasons to be proactive. So can I just real quick on the 5G, the 5G for similar reasons though, to the extent that, you know, if, even if it's not a perfect version and you know, we didn't draft it, we had some input, you know, keep you know, the the ideas for 5G, right? And Alice did a good job of summarizing it, but you, know, you can't really do much with the, with the 5G, so small mini cell towers. They're in the public right away. They're governed by the Public Utility Commission, but you can regulate towers and antenna that are on top of other structures. Those are the primary things that are, that are done by this ordinance. And also it updates all the regulations to be consistent with some recent FCC rulings and some, some federal law. So, um, the sooner that that's in place, the better, because you you know you are going to see that that sort of development these five Gs coming in, as well as your traditional cell towers still. So you know you really need to get those updated. So to the extent that we can, you know, work within the framers, not having to go back through this process back to the county, I'd suggest again get it on the books. We can always go back and revisit and improve it down the line. Understood and appreciate it. Only a couple bullets through. Uh, Only a couple bullets. So for my next half hour, <laughs> um, no, I'll, I'll turn it over to our, our wonderful engineer to discuss um, anything you want to update on our proposed paving and then um, the other bids that we put out. And I'll come back on the full locker. Or, are you coming back? Yeah, we, back? well, I, I skipped it. We, we can go to it now. I, it's, I up it. it's up to you. It's up to you. Alex, lock, do you want to give an update on the the, the ADA bathroom. Next uh, Tuesday, we'll up. open up bids at uh, the Turtle Creek Valley Council of Governments, and they'll be reviewed by uh, our architect who designed the, you know, the plans themselves. We'll approve like in April if they're acceptable, if there's a low bidder who's, who's acceptable then, then the Turtle Creek Council of Governments will approve sometime in April, I hope, as well, and the county will execute contracts. So potentially, we might have some demolition in June or or end of May, uh, hopefully we can start addressing those long-term uh, legacy issues with the building, getting the new updated uh, locker room for our police, and as well as for the public to have accessible restrooms. Super important. Glad, glad to hear that, that we're, we're moving forward and out of track. Yeah. Uh, and, and just to mention, this is the project that we, we applied for some grant funding for. So we yeah. do have some grant funding to help with the cost of this. And, and uh, that's part of the reason it's taken a little longer to get because we have to 
do it through the COG to get the grant funding to get all the con contractual paperwork from Allegheny County. So it took a little longer to, to get implemented, but we're excited that uh, it's coming along. Are you saying it doesn't just kind of flow through real easy like that? No? Takes, yeah. there's, there's some red tape. Okay. With little red tape in government, who would have ever thought? All right, well, I appreciate that. If we can move forward on your, on your uh, bullets to the tour engineer, I suppose. Uh, yeah, it's a quick update for the road paving program. Um, the proposed roads were listed there. They were developed based on the pavement management plan that was established uh, at the end of last year based on field evaluations. The map is over there behind Alex. Um, with that, uh, the schedule for bidding, it's to be advertised starting next week with the second advertisement the following week with a bid opening date scheduled for March 29th. So it'll be available for discussion at the April 3rd council meeting and then potentially for voting at the April 10th uh, council meeting. Um, the sanitary and sewer uh, operation maintenance contracts, these are the multi-year contracts um, that we both exhausted year three of the contracts for both the point repair contracts. So that's typically excavation and digging for both sanitary and storm sewers as well as the maintenance hole to maintenance hole or structure to structure uh, lining. And that's a uh, uh, cured in place pipe lining of the, of the system or trenchless rehabilitation. Uh, bids were open for those projects last Wednesday, the first. Um, we did only receive one bidder for each contract. In this case, it was actually the, the same contractor that we've had for the last six years for the point repair contract and for the last three years for the manhole to manhole lining contract. Um, in both cases, we did receive feedback from other contractors as to uh, why they did submit. Uh, there, there was a late submission for manhole to manhole lining and there was a late or uh, no, no submission from the one excavation contractor who had an internal issue and did not submit. However, we did review the bids as we typically would, and both both bids uh, fell in accordance with our estimates, as well as checking to make sure that they weren't unbalanced or that there were any issues with it. Um, so at this time, we we, we would recommend um, recommend both of those uh, to be awarded. They, they will be ready for you for consideration at next Monday's meeting. Okay, awesome. So, uh, interesting point about the um, the stormwater and, and sewer repair contracts. You know, the manhole to manhole lining and excavation repair. Uh, when I attended a, a Three Rivers wet weather event uh, a number of months ago, uh, you know, they said that there's a lot of communities that are just starting to get up to date on you know getting a lot of their uh, consent decree compliance, and they're going to be very busy over the next few years. So those contractors may actually be harder to come by. So it's, it's interesting that we only had one, you know, one bid. Uh, fortunately, it's, you know, both companies are, have worked with us before. They, they kept their pricing, you know, where, where it belongs and they're excellent companies. Um, but it, it speaks to our previous council and, you know, the, the guidance of our engineering, you know, consultant as well, that, you know, we've gotten ahead on a number of these issues. So we've kind of taken care of some of this work over the last couple of years, because I think, over the next few years, um, you know, the communities that have to do these large projects are they're going to wind up paying a little bit more because you know labor and contractors are going to be coming in a premium while everyone you know plenty of work out there to do. So we're we're in an excellent position uh, because of that, and, and we'll keep working forward. But um, you know, I'll wrap up the whole infrastructure by saying that uh, I appreciate our our staff, you know, in the office and and certainly our consultants, um, you know, with, with um, Gateway and Tucker, they they do a fantastic job and. Uh, without that, the, the infrastructure committee certainly would not be able to uh, take on the, the list that have been assigned to us. So they help us, they help us do, uh, you know, do, do good work and uh, do excellent work for the, the borough. And we appreciate their work and our staff as always. How much you pay? A significant amount. That's <laughs> <laughs> compliments do not come cheap. <laughs> no, but I, I, we, we all appreciate the work that you're doing. And that the committee I have to also that. say, Matt, Yes, he heads the committee, does a tremendous job. It is probably the most labor intensive 
well, I can't say that, but of all the committees, it's so much work. I, I, and he, I, and I just he, delegated all to Diane and Deb. It's fantastic. <laughs> no, I mean, we all work together. Yeah. But he, a great leader. He, he puts it all together. That's not and, the part I do well. Yeah, well, <laughs> right. But no, you do a great job. Favorite part Thank is, you. It's a lot of work. If you're over there, I'm up here. <laughs> Outstanding. Um, so we're going to push ourselves forward then, um, try and keep ourselves going. Appreciate all, all that information. Put this on the communication. I mean, I could just speak since Valerie yeah, isn't here. Um, our big thing is the newsletter is coming out at the end of the month. Uh, yeah, we hope to have it in the mailboxes by, by, April. by April 1st. Right, right, right. And many great articles that I think are very important to our residents about safety and all kinds of things. But a few dates to keep in mind now. April 8th is the Easter Bunny coming and the, uh, the route will be in the newsletter. Everyone must be patient. Sometimes the Easter Bunny talks too much and we get a little <laughs> bit behind in our schedule, but we try our best. Um, that's April 8th, that, the Saturday before Easter. Um, uh, what else? You will see in the newsletter, we are revisiting, which the rec board hasn't done in many years, is our Churchill dinner. Mm -hmm. We're calling it um, Cocktails and Cuisine and uh, mark your calendar, Sunday, May 7th. And it will be at the, if you're familiar with the Grand, Grandview Golf Club, you know, up on yeah. the hill there, way up there in, in uh, North Braddock, uh, they have a, a relatively new, great Italian restaurant. It's called Asti's. And we're hoping that um, residents will want to come, meet your neighbors. It's going to be a cash bar, but a lovely, lovely dinner. And there are many ways you can pay, check, cash, uh, credit card, it'll all be in the newsletter, but I'm really hoping, you know, we used to do this before COVID, yeah. so it's been about four years, but we're hoping, you know, this will be a great turnout and a great chance for people to, you know, talk to their neighbors, meet the mayor if they haven't. <laughs> yeah. Was there a limit on that? I, I know at one of the meetings they were discussing, there is there's a limit. maybe a I limit on the number, so get your 60. reservation early. Right, right, 50 or 60 will be the limit, because mm -hmm. the room can only hold so yeah, much, perfect. but we have a select dinner, like you have your choice of three or four yeah. really good mm -hmm. items, and it also includes appetizers, includes dessert, tax and gratuity, mm -hmm. um, and real good stuff, and it, oh, entertainment. entertainment, we have Jane West, who was at the Churchill um celebrate day she was strumming the guitar some nice background music it's just gonna be a very lovely evening and i hope our residents yeah. will go so that was may 8, uh, may 7th sunday and one other date of course down the road we've said it before august 12th is our churchill community day that we are still working on now and uh everyone we hope everybody will attend and there will be more detailed information as the spring comes along. But uh, as far as communication committee, the uh, newsletters are a big deal right now. So, so. And, and a good surprise that people want to come is to, to participate in that particular activity. I'm not going to say oh, what it is. But we can't say? Yeah, I don't know. It's uh, a good it's one. Not, uh, you can <laughs> say as far as I'm concerned. Should well, we is it legal? Should we say? <laughs> yeah, it's legal. Yeah, you can. We're going to have a dunking machine. Ah, yep. so maybe you, got it. Some select you can dunk the president of the council yeah. or the mayor. Yeah. 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 Well, no, nobody wants to. I heard, I heard the solicitor that's loves that's volunteering for things like that. Let's cut to it. Yeah. 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 I might be able to make a lot of money. Let's, let's <laughs> cut to the chase on that one. Right? Nobody wants to dunk the solicitor here. Nobody, nobody wants, wants to dunk, to dunk the, mayor. the president of the council yeah. or the mayor. I, I believe. I believe that there might be a few people yeah. that may take a throw. <laughs> you know. Is he, are you in the safety of a cage in case I miss, or can I just turn around? <laughs> no, get a catcher's mask. It's going to be fun. fun. Okay. We have all kinds of games for I got, kids. I got things and, to say. Yeah. I got things to say. Okay. okay. So that's it for communications. Look for that newsletter, hopefully in your mailbox by mm -hmm. April 1st. It's a good one. Anything on, on climate or deer? I'm going to go, I'm going to open them both quickly. Okay. Because... I'll do climate again because yep. I am now the yes, chair of the climate since Adam is no longer yes, here um, and we Matt and Brooke and I have our first I guess our first meeting mm -hmm. uh, March 14th uh, which we'll be discussing you know a few things you know uh, 
uh, I've been talking to people from Connect, which if you're familiar with Connect, you know, Congress of Neighboring uh, Neighbors, and they come together to help with environmental issues. And so, you know, hopefully that's something our committee can, you know, kind of wrap ourselves around and, and get more information and how we can improve our air quality. I mean, Pittsburgh does not have great air, air quality. It's improved in the past few years, but it's still not great. And maybe there, you know, there are things we can do to help that situation. Um, also, we'll be working with Penn Environment and there is a future ban on plastic bags coming up. It's, it's not countywide yet, it's the city, but it's gonna affect us sooner or later. And so there are things we need to know. Um, it was supposed to be April 15th when it went into place. It pushed it back for a couple of months. So, and you might say, well, it doesn't gonna affect Churchill, but when you have going to the Giant Eagle in Squirrel Hill or whatever, mm -hmm. It's going to affect people, and it's and I think it's a good thing to you know environmentally. Right, this is going to be gone. Yeah. Um, we're all moving in the right direction with that. So there are a lot of things that our our climate action committee is going to be talking about and working on. So thank you, Anna. Mm -hmm. Thank you. But for, for reusable bags, I'll just tell you, it's way easier when you go shopping. No, it is. Places. You just have to get into the habit of bringing your usable yeah. bag. Yeah. I have it in my front seat, and then I forget about it. And in I go fact, in there and I go, oh, God, you know, but yeah, sure. And, and Connect will be here uh, next Monday. We'll talk to council, give them some updates. What's up? Okay. Um, anything else here? Yes. Uh, Matt and I have met on your mm -hmm. committee. We've talked about the people that we need to communicate with who are already doing this, municipalities, and also the academic research. Uh, and we'll, we're gathering information about what has happened since our last year committee. Uh, the other decision that we made was that we want to start out by hearing from the citizens instead of doing it the other way around. So, uh, we are going to be having a meeting in the middle, which will advertise, obviously, in the middle of April. And that will be at the Black Civic Association because we, you know, we may get more people here than are comfortable. So, mm -hmm. you know, the best, the best thing to do is plan for that. So I spoke with the president of the Black Civic Association. They're, they're, they're happy to accommodate that us. So I'll be talking to the scheduler about exactly what day, evening. Awesome. We're thinking midweek, um, 7, 7.30, something like that. Okay. I'll obviously let you all know as soon as we have that mail then. I will be there. I will be there. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. Sure. Uh, sorry. Never mind. Uh, I don't know if anybody has any questions before I move to the mayor. Mr. Mayor, the floor is yours, sir. Yeah, but, you know, one thing I, I, I'm always going to keep on this front burner until we get this this done is I, 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 I talked to um, Jay Costa last week about the uh, lights, the speed lights. So he said, yes. that, he told me that uh, March 16th, the grants will be open. Uh, we applied for that grant. And he's trying to work with us to get, right. you know, get us some help to get those back online. When I talked the other day about the ones we have now, um, you know, and everybody I talk to, is, you know, tells you about the speed for our bar. So it mm -hmm. continues to be a big problem. So we want to work on that. Um, Deb talked about the bunny prey, so we'll be out there doing that. Um, there's something coming up on April 14th. Uh, uh, Willow Hills High School planting trees down on the oh. on the uh, green space. Mm -hmm. So if anyone's available to get out there on that day, I think it's between 8 a.m. and 2 p.m. Yeah. We'll be down there planting trees. Um, I got a note that someone had called me, their, their mother and stepfather were involved in a pretty bad accident down on Buell Road, and Homer uh, had to take, been taken to the hospital, and this uh, gentleman called me, he says, you know, he just couldn't tell enough about how Officer Sage was really helpful in, in taking care of the situation, the professionalism, the compassion that she showed, you know, he just was telling me over and over again, just, he was so pleased with how it worked out. He did tell me the other day I talked to him, his mother and stepfather out of the hospital. They were in there for a couple of days now. So but that's out of the way. Um, but you know, thanks to Officer Sage. And that's not the first time we've heard stories like this. And the other thing was, um, this is a public service now, the Rotary's having their golf outing May 30th. So if you want to sign up for that, you can get those golf clubs out 
even if you don't golf, it was a terrific dinner afterwards. How can so, people sign up? Let everybody know how they can sign well, up. I've sent out a letters to a whole bunch of people. Okay. I have brochures. If anyone's interested, they can contact me. Contact you? Yeah. Okay. You know, or me. I'm, I'm in the Rotary. They can now. contact me as well. All right. I appreciate your comments. Uh, any additional comments from the Council for the Public before we uh, wrap our way? And it was a productive and busy meeting today. Hearing none, I would close with one last tiny, tiny comment, uh, which is uh, Woodland Hills Youth Soccer. Yeah. Yeah, the season starts April 17th. We still have the opportunity for anyone who wants to sign up. Uh, if your kid is uh, particularly between the age, you know, born in the year 2012, I would, I would particularly uh, love for them to sign up, especially if you have daughters in the age of born in 2012 oh, oh, not saying that i know any coaches out there who coach the 2012 uh girls team um which by the way uh it's on a five game women's winning streak i might add uh just pointing that out um but if you have a child that's interested um you can go to uh Wooden hills youth soccer association and uh have to get people registered and give them the opportunity uh to play some soccer so that's all i got uh before you adjourn, uh, Mr. President, I, I made gonna, a request. I'm going to go to that. I, I was on my very short example. We're on the same for litigation, for litigation purposes, yes. right? Absolutely. So thank you all. Game set matches to the public. We are going to stay today as counsel for, so, for yeah, a quick second. You can stay on, and then I'll stop recording, stop streaming the Facebook, all that good stuff. But you stay on, and then we'll make sure it's just you and the counsel in a few minutes, okay? Thank you. I'm going to stretch for Thank questions. you. Good stretch.